Hi, today we're going to look at a print. It's called Preparing for Market. It was produced by a magazine called Courier and Ives. It was named Courier and Ives because it was a um, brother and like brother-in-law duo. Um, it was Nathaniel Courier. He was born in 1813 in Massachusetts. And his brother-in-law, his name is James Merritt Ives, and he was born in New York City in 1824. So, um, James, he was an artist, and Nathaniel, he worked in a, um, as an apprentice in the lithogra lith lithography shop when he was younger. And they started this business, and they would do magazines, and this was their most famous print that they ever did. It was made in 1835, and it was so popular that they were still selling copies of it six years later. So it was the most popular one that they did. This was a new kind of way to get pictures, like in books and magazines, they used it to make maps. It was something that they would do so that they could get pictures to as many people as possible. Before this, the only way for people to really kind of get pictures was you would just kind of have a hand drawing and then somebody would have to replicate it. Um, with the invention of the printing press, they were finally able to print books for the first time instead of having to do them by hand. And this was um, a technology that was able to use the printing press so that they could mass produce pictures. So the process is called lithography, and I could be pronouncing that wrong, but we're gonna just go with that. <laughs> and what it does is it uses different plates. They could be used with stone or metal, and they essentially would use some type of an oil or a wax and they would draw on these plates and then they would dump a chemical on them and they would add some water and then they would roll on the ink. And if you've ever taken a bowl of water and you've put some oil on top, the oil, it won't mix in with the water, it just floats on the top. And so they took that idea and they thought, well, if we have the oil and the water, we can separate them and we'll, we'll etch with this kind of like an, like an oil or a wax and we can create a picture. And so when they do that, then they use the water to kind of separate the two and then they roll the ink over the flat part. Then they can put it in the printing press and they take the printing press and it has this big lever that you kind of pull on and it presses it down and it can print the picture. So how it works is you can see here on this picture that we've got the red on his sleeves, the red on this shirt, we've got the red here on the apples, so all of the reds, they probably would have been on the same lithograph, okay? And they would have had multiples to print this picture. So they would have had maybe this brown here in the corner here, and that might've been on the same plate as like these chickens. It could have been on maybe even the same plate as part of the house, okay? Maybe some of the things in the back, some of the greens would be, so they would usually have one per color. They might have two per color, and they would have to start at the back, and so they would press it and let it dry and then they would do the next color so I guess in theory actually they would have to start with the one up front because they would have to do what was on the front of the paper first and they would have to work their way backwards and they would put the green like right here up here or the blue of the sky that would be very very last um, this process was originated in 1796 so about 40 years before they were putting it in the magazine um, it was in the Bavarian region, which is southern Germany, that a man invented this. And they were able to use the printing press and use this process to create these pictures. So when this was printed in 1835, this might have been um, indicative of a lot of places in America, but especially a small farming community. So back then, you wouldn't have been able to go somewhere like Fry's or Walmart to get your groceries, right? Um, they didn't even have electricity. Their lives looked a lot different than ours, and this was long before cars were invented. So this family, they own a farm. You can see that they've got like this, um, like they've got the barn back here, and I'm not sure if that's like a silo or a big pile of hay. To me, it kind of looks like a big pile of hay, right? And they've got they've got a big wood pile because they don't have electricity, so they're gonna have to bu burn firewood for warmth in their home, right? They've got a cellar. Back, like back in those times, they wouldn't have had a refrigerator. So they would have grown things like potatoes and garlic and onions, and they would have stored them down in the cellar in the dark where it was nice and cool underground so that they could store their food for months at a time. And then they have their chickens, and then they've got their uh, farm animals where they can get their milk, and they can get their eggs. 
And this was how they had to live. They had to provide for their own needs and grow their own food. But what would happen is they would maybe have a crop of carrots. They've got some cabbage. Maybe those are apples. We're not really sure, but they're going to have excess food. So they plant their big garden and they get, you know, if you've ever grown a garden before, you have a ton of zucchini at once and you can't possibly eat that much zucchini. So what you do is you load it up into your horse and buggy, got your little cart back here and see she's handing him baskets and he's going to load up all their extra food and he's going to take it to the market. So all the people in the community, they're going to take their carts filled with all of their excess and they're going to bring it to the market and they can trade with each other. So maybe this family, they don't have enough eggs, so they need more eggs, but they have lots of carrots so they can go to the market and they can trade somebody. Hey, I'm going to give you my carrots and you're going to give me eggs or I have a lot of zucchini. Do you guys have any flour? And they can kind of, they can, it's called a barter system where they get to trade with each other. And in trading, then they're able to fulfill the needs of their family. Okay. So here's a description of the, um, of the painting that they put in the magazine. It says, the time is early morning in summer. On the right, a boy is holding the horse whose appearance and condition are credit creditable to his owner. The farmer stands in his wagon, taking down from the woman a basket of eggs, which is she is handing up to him. Nearby are baskets of vegetables and bunches of carrots, beets, and garden stuff. Ready for market are a number of fowls, turkeys, ducks, and chickens. In 1862, in, okay, so I guess I was wrong. I said it at 835. But in 1862, Courier and I said, this is one of those agreeable domestic scenes which are sure to please everybody who loves the attractive features of an American farmhouse. So this is very much what a lot of America looked like back then. This was the way that they lived. This was the way that they functioned. And I think that it really resonated with people that this was like their way of life as well. So, um... The magazine continued for a while. Um, the brother-in-law who was born in New York, he ended up leaving and his son took his place. And so the, the man's son and then his uncle, they ran the business for quite a while, for a very, very long time that they, they were able to run this business. And they say that the process of lithographs is something that they still use today for some things. So it was a pretty innovative technology at the time and is still something that we use today. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed a little peek into what life would have been like on a farm in America in the 1860s and that you learned a little bit about the printing press and lithographs and the process of how that works. Thanks. Bye.